to find your way through all this can stuff. Can I go in the middle? You can, yes, please. I'm going in the middle. All right, I'm just... Okay. What? Ah! Uh, is it working? <laughs> oh my gosh! Hey Twitch! Welcome. Thank you! Hi Twitch! Hello again! Welcome. Hello! And we still haven't tested it yet, have we? No. The we do NDI. intend to though. What are, what are we testing? The NDI. The special effects. Oh, the special effects. Oh, the spe yes, you need to come and try out our tech. All right. That's what you need to do. We can't move the whole thing, unfortunately. No. no. We'll try it. But you can take some video for later so people can see. Yes, we can. Right. So we had a little chat earlier, but if you want, for those that missed it and everything else, do you want to tell us who you are? and? Sure. Um, um, my name is Stevie Ward. I work for a charity called Special Effect. Um, we help disabled people play video games. So that can be anything from uh, modifying a controller setup. So creating switches that can be adapted to chairs or for people that want to be able to use their chin or different parts of their hands to play. We also make software as well. So we'll make middleware for games so that people can play the games that they want to play if they need assistance. So the game we brought with us today, we thought you guys would like a flight game. Hell yeah. <laughs> so we brought um, a game called Fruits of a Feather so that uh, it's just basically a game where you become a bird and we're using eye tracking technology to be able to do it. So your eyes control. Your eyes control where it. You go. Your eyes can just your eyes. So but I would probably still crash more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you roll your eyes. Just like, Whoa! Yeah. Oh, the ground looks so pretty. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've seen this eye tracking stuff. It, you can yeah. do it for streamers. Streamers can use yeah. it. It's, yeah. It's sort of con you can see where people are looking on the screen. Yeah. Mm. So how does it actually control the avatar or the So character? it's infrared technology. So you can buy these now either um, built into a laptop or something that you basically tack on to a PC or to a laptop. Sort of like a camera. Sort of like a camera where these guys are. And uh, basically it just tracks your eye movements. And then the software um, basically tells you, it's kind of like basically becomes a mouse. So yeah, whether you're talking about like a dwelling action on a reticule to make a keyboard work on the screen, or you just want to um, kind of look around and control something like so no need for hands at all. No need for hands at all. So if we're working with somebody maybe who has cerebral palsy or they have a paralysis or they're not able to use their arms for whatever reason or they um, have difficulty with fine motor skills, right. uh, it means that they can play. And um, so this week we released some software for, for example, for, for Minecraft. Um, yes. Did I tell I you? Saw the tweet, I saw the tweet about it. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah we, were, we were so exciting. Uh, we, it was so exciting. So basically kids can... Uh, Kids can uh, play. <laughs> hey, play hey, Needle. Eyes. Kids can play with. Uh, kids can play Minecraft now. So if they if they've had a if they've had difficulty playing with controllers or mice before, they can now play Minecraft. So, so <laughs> just explain how like using your eyes to control is it to control where the character goes in Minecraft? So or with with Minecraft, yeah, it's basically uh, it's a mixture between two things. There's a keyboard overlay. And check it out on, if you go to our YouTube. Um, or our website, we've got videos on how it works. Yes, exclamation SE. Yes, exclamation SE, have a, check it out. Um, so basically, there's a keyboard that sort of comes up on the screen. Right. And then there's a dwelling action. So if you want to walk, you just leave your eyes on walk and it goes boop. And then it yeah, tells okay. the computer you want to walk, and then you're controlling it with your eyes. So it's not like an instant thing. It's like you you look at it to, to confirm, okay. and you okay. stare at it. Confirm, confirm like a, like a mouse going. click. Oh, yeah, like a mouse click. But then with the game we brought today, there's no mouse mouse clicking involved or anything. It just literally takes you on a journey with your eyes for flight. Um, it's really really great for flight games, which is why I think a lot of games companies are looking at um, eye tracking tech like um, Track IR or Toby support for things like dog fighting games and stuff like that. That's uh, not going to help us. We're no. We're just no. rubbish anyway. At dog <laughs> fighting. So I'm pretty yeah. good at dog fighting. Have you had a go? Um, I haven't had a go at this, but I've worked on dog fighting games, so I'm pretty good at getting myself out of a furball, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, uh, how do you think it can benefit like the Star Citizen community in terms of controlling ships? Well, I mean, with eye tracking tech, um, if people wanted to use their eyes to basically control where the ship was going and use their hands for something else, I could see it being really good for that. Um, on a game I was working on, we used head tracking for um, reticules for tracking targets. So if you imagine you're sort of, you know, you're in a furball and you're pulling up, but you want to keep looking at where you're going with your, you know, you want to control the ship with one, yeah. but you want to like catch a target that's going behind on your six, you could basically look up and then it would know where you were going and then you'd be able to release maybe with a control or with voice tech to be able to shoot so it just gives you another another weapon in the like arsenal an extra really peripheral to just make yeah make use of so yeah. it's, again it's one like more thing for you to think about though, doesn't it? yeah <laughs> i won't even be able to install it and i'll, I'll be sort of struggling there but yeah. like the idea is i guess we, we have uh, mfds which are multifunction displays so basically right. in, in the ship you've got multiple displays on your 
in your peripherals. Right, like on your HUD. Yes, exactly. It's, right. a, it's, it's like a physical HUD in the game. Right. Rather than on the screen. Yeah. So you could probably use it to look around particular MFDs. Different, different parts of the MFDs bring up different MFDs. Um, but also, like if, for example, you know, there was a kind of a UI where if you locked onto a different ship, if you focused on the ship, it could bring up information about that ship yeah. just from looking at your eyes. That way you're not like typing on a keyboard, what's yeah. that ship? Yeah. How is it fitted? You know, what damage is it going to do if it gets comes to me? And you could just do that with your eye and it would lock on. Um, awesome. I mean, that kind of, I mean, the, the implications of that are limitless, especially when it comes to a sci-fi game like Star Citizen, where so much information is contained in your HUD, but there's so much more you could have access to if yeah, you were just, yeah. if you were able yeah. to look away from what you were doing, or if you didn't want to look away, but you wanted more info in your peripheral. Yeah, it's kind of like the simplicity of, I need to see something, yeah. my eyes can make it work. Yeah. Instead of having to physically look around or look do down or, yeah. or move away from it's your It's like white instinctive. Part. Mm -hmm. Which I think is Very what much. tends to happen with, with head tracking especially, is that people think it's, it's kind of complicated, they think it's, it's going to be overcomplicated. <laughs> it becomes no. instinctive, and when you yeah. don't have it, it's weird. You feel you weird, looking yeah. and it's like, yeah. it's not moving. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like trying to track a hornet, and I'm like, what? But some of the best fighter pilots are always moving their neck. Like, if you look mm -hmm. at different fighter pilots in action, either, either from the dog fighting games or anything else, like, they're always looking around, even whilst they're doing something else completely, because you want to be able to have the periphery of everything around you, and sometimes reliance on that HUD. Like, I was having an interesting conversation with somebody earlier about HUD scrambling, about whether or not bringing in a ship that could was essentially a logistics ship um, to Star Citizen, that would scramble your HUD. Right. Yeah. Um, would yeah, kind of like, be would be would be quite interesting. Like e warfare. Yeah, e warfare. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, that's <laughs> the that's the fun stuff. So what you know, what happens if your if your HUD scrambled? How would you fight? Like, how would you know who's behind you, who's yeah. next to mm. you? Um, what you know, what would you? What tech would just be on your ship? Where if your radar was gone, you'd be able to use you need and wing mirrors. Wing mirrors or <laughs> head tracking tech. Or head tracking. Or head tracking tech. Wing mirrors, head tracking. Yeah. <laughs> probably head tracking. That's but probably yeah. the best way to go. But, but no, yeah. I think it's really cool. We, yes. We will have a try of it. Yes. Eventually. Uh, but at some, at some point, on. you're going to the release these on, guys yeah. from their from their. Uh, from their seats and you guys yep. can come and try out our tech Definitely, yeah. and um and please do check out the charity and um everything that we do because we do a bunch of cool stuff and uh yes. we'd love exclamation to SE. exclamation yeah. se if you want to hear What's about that special effects one more time <laughs> and otherwise the panel is below uh, the stream as well there's a special yeah. effects tab yeah. you can yeah. click that and that'll also take you to the website yeah or you can go to www.specialeffect.org.uk there's so many ways there's so, <laughs> many, there's so many there's so many ways find more professional it's like you know what you're talking it's about it's like i know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. so there's, there's loads of ways you can get involved and if you're obviously if you're interested in uh, similar to the alpha testing us, process of Star Citizen, us, or the community like looking at the games that we do, or there's somebody most importantly, if there's someone that um, the you think we could help um, play a video free. game, please do get in touch with us because yeah. we spread the word. and spread the word because we you know we we visit people in their homes and we're we're happy to come and and check check you guys out and see, uh, see if there's something we can do to make make your experience a bit easier and better when yeah. it comes to playing a video game. And it's incredible uh, the people that ask like they, they want to play the games. They have a disability in some way. Having them given the option to actually play the game yeah. and continue gaming, regardless of what the, uh, the disability is. Exactly. Um, you know, you, you, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to play games just yeah. for a disability. Well, there's no helping so. you. Well, yeah, yeah, but mine's not a disability. It's just yeah. a no good. It's just crap. <laughs> Uh, some people, like, some people, for the, for a lot of the kids that we see, they may have never played a game before, yeah. or never been able to have the technology to play a game. And for others, we don't just work with kids; we work with grown-ups too, mm. all the way, all the way, and you know, through. Um, for some people, it may have been that they've been injured, or that they've yeah. had a condition that's progressed. Um, so if they used to be like crazy good at like an yeah, FPS or something like that, and that was the thing they really, yeah. really loved doing, mm. um, then having the ability to not do that like they used to do, like if, for example, they've suffered a stroke or something mm. like that, um, you know, sometimes you know the, there isn't a lot of stuff on line to be able to help but we've got um, a YouTube channel which shows you how to modify controllers for single-handed use that but that's, if you search for the gamers charity on YouTube you will find our channel uh, but we've got and same with loads of tutorials so like obviously well, we don't sell anything we don't sell software we don't sell uh, our occupational therapists or anything like that it's all completely free right. um, so we just want to spread the word so we've got tons of tutorials online uh, if you are looking for ways to kind of play a certain game or if there's something you want to learn we'll try and make a video to show you how to do it especially if you want to do sort of one-handed 
stuff with the controller or bits and pieces like that because um, right. obviously we just want to share share the love yeah definitely. Um, same with the, the uh, Minecraft software we released it on Tuesday and then on Wednesday we woke up and there was a video of someone in Japan using it oh, my wow. and so we were just like oh my gosh <laughs> way <laughs> too fast yeah it was How really cool that? it was it was amazing so we were, you know just worldwide we're trying to make a difference and help yeah, as many awesome. as many gamers as we can play video games that's what we want, we're all gamers. Same. Yeah, exactly. All for all. And all for one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> but no, thank you for joining us. Oh, you're very, very welcome. Much appreciate it. I'm going to sneak back to my to my little uh, demo oh, area, but please come earlier. We'll to everyone in Twitch, cat, check us out. Um, we'll see you do soon. As you're told. Do, as you're, do as you're told. Hope you enjoy the rest of the stream. And I'll see you later. Bye. Thank you, thank you very much. much. And like that, she's got. Special effects. <laughs>